Welcome back to episode three, working on our model railway. And this time we're going to be finishing off the track laying. Now, in the last two, I haven't really gone over much of the practicalities of how I've actually laid the track down, mostly because I've been trying to relearn it myself. So now I'm reasonably confident I've got all of these down, they work, and I've actually done a little bit of wiring already. So in this episode, I'm going to go over the last piece of track to go down, which is over this side. This is the fuel depot, has a pair of Y points and two sidings which will just run over to that side of the board and then we're going to wire everything up and get it all running ready for a DCC system. So this is the final part of the depot track to be laid and the last point section that we need to put in, the last turnout, is this Y section. Uh, this is a 23 centimeter piece I believe, let me just check, 22, 22 centimeter which I think makes it a medium turnout but I could be wrong. Um, and that goes on to the end of this right-hand angle turnout that comes across this way. Then there'll be two sidings which run across onto the other side of the board like that. These will run parallel down, as I mentioned before, to be the fuel depot. Now, one piece of track is roughly the right length from chopping pieces off to put all the rest of this down, but the other one obviously needs cutting down completely. Now, I have been cutting this cork up, this three millimeter cork to do the rest of the board. Obviously this isn't going to be enough. So I need to chop a little bit more off this big long roll. So I just lightly score through to try and do it in a couple of passes. I found if you try to do it in one go all the way through, you can tear out the cork and you'll get a raggedy edge rather than a nice crisp one when you get to this end. There we go. That's actually cut through really quite nicely. So we're probably going to need another one of those at least but I'll do that in a minute. So with that out of the way, we can start marking out exactly where this is going to go. I've just very roughly penciled in an approximate location for this piece uh, previously, and somewhere around here, I have my plan. And I know I've deviated from the plan somewhat, but this bit is pretty much as it was. So I'm just going to go and try and find that. So here is my plan, and I can see exactly where the right-hand track, the furthest track, uh, this one, comes to. So it's one, two, wow, well, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's about 800 mil from that end of the board up to the edge where this track should end. And then they should both be parallel off that. And I'm going to use the Pico way gauge on set track in order to spread them out a little bit further, just so there's enough space in the middle for all of the scenery. Now the inside edge of that sits about 10 centimeters in. Each one of these squares are a 10 by 10. So I can work out from here roughly where that square ends. So this location here is approximately where the end of the right hand siding is going to go to. Now further up at this end you can see another intersection of three lines. So this is 40 centimeters in and this is 80, 90, 100. 1.1 meters up to here where this intersection is and this is almost in line 45 degrees across these boards so we can probably work out pretty accurately where these tracks need to go just from this so I'm going to lay that out and then start putting down the cork So these two points here, which is 400 mil in from that end and 110 from that end, and this one, which is 80 and 10 in, this will be the center line of the depot. And we can start aligning other pieces, like this section of track, onto it. Now, I might actually move this slightly down, because at the moment, at this end, these two points are very, very close to one another, and that's going to make it difficult to get a point motor in under each one. So I might actually, that's very convenient, might use this little piece of track to just move them along and then I can put the point motors opposite ways round so that the actuators face one another and the point motor will be at this end and this end of each of those points. Here's the short extension piece of track and I'm hoping that this is going to be long enough once it is in on the end of this rail to fill in the gap that I need to push these far enough apart. So there we go. I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see on the overhead camera, I think it's just out of shot. Um, the actuator for this set of points is now far enough away from this set that they can operate 
separately from one another without actually clashing. I'll get a close-up of that to put in once this is all glued down, because I really want to get the glue drying so we can finish the, all of this up today. So now going from the two marks that we made earlier with from our layout drawing and into this set of points, we can work out exactly what the root of the track should be if we follow by those plans. And you can see ooh, the mark down here and the mark here. If we line this ruler up, that actually fits incredibly well with the line directly into the middle of this frog. That's a lot better than I would have expected it to have been. <laughs> I, I genuinely didn't test that before I put the ruler down. I'm very pleased that that's actually come out as close as it has. So from there, we can now work out where the cork is gonna go down under the two sidings, and we can fill in the gap underneath this set of points with some more cork, a little bit wider, and make sure that it's all gonna be nicely supported. So as I said, using the set track side of the spacer, I'm going to push this on and work out how far apart these two sidings are going to need to be. Now, I could have just done this in a single piece of cork. In fact, I might even just measure this piece up because it does seem to be very, very close to the overall width. This is just over 10 centimetres. And that actually fits almost perfectly. So in that case, I'm going to mark a center line on this, and I'm just going to put this down through the middle, rather than using these two pieces. They'll not be going to waste at all, because we still need to do a little bit at the top here. But we'll g we've got a lot more track to lay down the line, if you'll pardon the pun. Uh, but this is going to make it a lot simpler to just lay the track down here. So that's the main body of the cork down for the fueling yard. Now I can just extend it along and fill in under these points using the shorter pieces, including this one that I had left over from before. So now with the points back in, you can see exactly what shape we need to fill in with this shorter piece. And that will go right across there and fit really nicely up into that gap. I might fill this center piece in, but for now, I'm just going to leave it as is. I see we'll have plenty spare once we've cut off this edge here. Again, we just go down, make a mark. Now, as you're putting the track down, you've got to make sure that the droppers don't get caught up underneath. Otherwise, they're going to disconnect and they're going to get caught up and you're not going to have any continuity from the bottom of the track up onto the layout. So it's worth taking a little bit of time to just slowly lower this in. So we just need to put some weights on this and then straighten up these two sidings so that they are absolutely in line. Now, the one on the left here looks like it's just curving off ever so slightly, so I'm going to pull that in that way. Once you've got it all straight, again, just take your T-square and make sure that you've got it exactly right. This has gone a little bit further out than last time. It's about 70 mil from the inside, so from the outside edge of the rail up to the outside edge of the inside chairs. But that's fine because it's exactly the same all the way down from one end to the other. So I'm quite happy to call that done. And I'm just going to weight this down and then leave it overnight till tomorrow. And we'll do some more then. So this is the underside of the board, and as you can see, I've got a few bits laid out already just to help me make sense of all of these wires as they come down from the top. The very top of the board are the four sidings that were closest to me when we had the board on the flat and we were installing bits earlier on. So these are the four lines that come through with the points for access. This is the head shunt, so this is powered right at this end here. There's another power dropper um, at, the, at the start of the shed, really, and there's a power dropper across all four of those runs. And all of these are the various different points, uh, point motor, power, and um, frog power cables, which are the green ones in the middle of each of these. This line runs down, breaks out at this point across, which I'll be drawing the lines in shortly, and this one breaks out into two, and that becomes these three lines, which is the middle section of the yard over here. Off this set of points, this breaks down into this 
uh, collection of droppers. This is the one that comes out from our Y turnout that we just installed. And these two sets of droppers here are for the fuel terminal that will come all the way down, or already do come all the way down across near enough to the edge of this board. Now, once again, you might be looking at this thinking this is massively overkill, and it really is. This is 18 mil uh, plywood, which, as I said before, kind of made a rod for my own back because when I tried to order 12 mil, they didn't have any in stock, so they upgraded me to 18 mil, which has now meant that everything I make is going to end up having to be made on 18 mil boards. So the frame this is sat on, although it probably doesn't need to be sat on a frame being 18 mil plywood, um, is all made of 1x4 timber. Now 1x4 timber is actually not quite 25 by 100. This is 18 mil by 94 dressed timber. So this has been plain down. It's 1x4 raw. Uh, so when it's all plain smooth, it's a little bit smaller. So when I had this cut down to a meter, I also had two long stringers cut off to match at 94 mil. And the big reason that this needed to go on was so that I could put it on this table and it would be supported on these two pieces because it's actually bigger than the tabletop all the way around the edge. So it'll just drop down, which is no good because all of these cables, everything else would get broken. And when I install point motors, I'm going to end up having exactly the same problem where these end up getting knocked off on the side of the table. So with these mounted onto the bottom of the board like that, they are actually shorter. Well, if I put it that way around, it's probably a little bit better demonstration. They are shorter than the total height of, these, uh, of this framework. So they'll sit under quite nicely and they'll not get damaged when this is sat on the frame on the table. But before we get into fitting and wiring any point motors, I'm going to have to go through and get all of these cables, well, specifically these droppers, wired in. Now, I'm using these little boss bars that I saw on um, Chadwick Model Railway with, uh, with Charlie, and he recommended these, and frankly, they are the best things in sliced bread when it comes to making a boss bar, as far as I'm concerned. They come with these little boss bars in both red and black, and they come in fives, sixes, and tens, assuming you buy the multi-pack with five, sixes, and tens. They do come in other sizes, but I bought a twin pack, uh, sorry, I bought a multi-pack with a pair of fives, a pair of sixes, and a pair of tens, some of which I've already attached onto the board. So at the top of the board here, I've used a 10-way, and I've split it into two different uh, sections, one for positive, one for negative, and I just have a five-way, because I have five droppers that come in from this, uh, this section. So there's one, two, three, four across the main runs, and one from the head shunt. So that provides power, or rather, that gets power through this block, and I can just wire a single cable into the bus from that section, and I can also isolate that section very simply whilst keeping everything else live at a later date, either with a switch or just disconnecting it should I need to. Now to hold all of the droppers up, I've actually used quarter inch P-clips, so these are really, really good. Obviously they screw in, so they're not going to have any problem with um, glue falling off, they're removable. If you want to put another wire through, you just open them up, put, uh, either put a completed wire in, or you can just slot it through and, and keep adding to it as you go on, which is really, really convenient. So I've just put these in every now and again to keep everything nice and tidy. So as I mentioned, I've already mounted all of these uh, blocks that I need onto the inside edge of this board. I've got the um, shed rails, which is the large shed, this, this one, at the top. And then I've got another one for the inspection pit house uh, rails, which is down here. And then another one for the rails for the fuel depot down this end. So three different districts, if you will, um, in order to allow the power to be nice and easily rooted and not have big nests going all over the place. Now, obviously, we need to extend these wires because they are a little bit short to reach over to this section. Um, I didn't want to try and guess where I was going to put all of these blocks. I thought it was much easier to just run with it, put all the wires through, and then extend as needed. So with that in mind, we need to turn a couple of bits of wire to go onto the end of each one of these. Now before I put these wires anywhere near this, I'm going to make sure that I've got a couple of pieces of heat shrink threaded on already. So if I keep them on at that end, I can easily spot them, I can run them down, and if I do forget for whatever reason, as soon as I cut it off the reel, then I can put the heat shrink on so I don't end up making a mistake, because I've done that any number of times and had to redo things in the past. And after a lot of soldering, 
extending the wires and fitting the bus bars, it's time to test the tracks. Connecting power to one line in each area should power all of the tracks connected to the bus bar. Running over the points isn't possible because they haven't been connected and there's no power past the insulated joiners onto the frogs. Despite my somewhat poor soldering, these all seem to be working quite nicely. Next time, it's point motors, and we can rig all of this up with some temporary switches so that we can actually run between each of the areas and make sure it all works properly. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell to get notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks very much for watching.